we had a message that came from a girl that said exactly this. He won't stop raping me. It's my dad. He told me not to tell anyone. And then the letters, are you there? And so there were a couple of weeks of like very sleepless nights. And I realized if they're gonna reach out to us by text, there needs to be a hotline by text. My name is Nancy Lublin, and I'm the founder and CEO of Crisis Text Line, and I'm a volunteer. We're not a suicide line, we're here for all of it. The reason that we're on text is that we wanna be where you are, and we wanna make it as easy as possible for people who are in pain to get help. My name's Bob Philbin, and I am the Chief Data Scientist at Crisis Text Line. A little over three years, 29, almost 29 million messages, over a million messages per month at this point, exchanged between our crisis counselors and our texters. That translates to a little over 600,000 conversations. So each of these conversations is actually pretty rich, over 40 messages exchanged. We're reaching a traditionally underserved population. 75% of our texters are under the age of 25. Around 47% of our texters do not identify as straight or heterosexual. 5% of our texters identify as American Indian. About 10% of our texters now are under age 13, which is mind blowing to me because a lot of kids under 13 don't even have phones. Some people, I think, assume that because it's texting, it's a lesser version of what would be on the phone, and that's not true. 65% of texters say that they've shared something with us they've never shared with another human. Allowing people to express their thoughts and feelings with the blanket of anonymity is so important. We're always working to improve that experience for our counselors to be able to take texters from a heated moment to a cool calm. Most customer service chronological. That's, I think, what people assume that we do, but we don't. We put a few dozen words into the algorithm. Die, overdose, suicide and we ranked based on that. So if the algorithm read those words, we made those people number one in the queue and we take them very, very quickly and they're coded orange. We take people based on severity. When a texter is at imminent risk and they also are unwilling to come up with a safety plan, that's when an active rescue is initiated and that's when emergency services are called. An active rescue is not our goal. Our goal is to actually de-escalate the situation so that we don't have to call 911. We brought in our first machine learning data scientist, and he looked at the 20 million messages back and forth and said, okay, what are the words that actually end up having to trigger that active rescue? Like, who really is imminent risk? And it turns out there are thousands of words and word combinations that are higher risk than even the words die, overdose, and suicide. Ibuprofen, aspirin, Tylenol, Advil, those words those words suggest that someone doesn't just have the ideation and the plan, but they have the means and they have the timing because it's right there in arm's reach. The other thing that's fascinating is the unhappy face crying emoji. Turns out to be four times more likely in us having to trigger an active rescue than the word suicide. The purpose of our data is to serve our users, to serve people in crisis, but I think there's a whole second layer of impact. CrisisTrends.org is our open data for the public. Anybody can access it, it's, it's available online right now. One university wants to look at the words most often associated with child abuse, because child abuse is very underreported in America. If they can figure out what those words are, then you turn those words back out to pediatricians and principals, and you can help more kids. Empathy is a really big word that we use. I think our company's focus is empathy. We see that trying to put yourself in the other person's shoes is so important. Our crisis counselors are some of the greatest people I've ever met. I actually found out about Crisis Text Line through a psychologist within the Muslim community. I'm really interested in the mental health sphere and this was really innovative, how strangers are helping strangers and they want to just be able to talk to somebody. They just want to get it off of their chest. I had a texter whose best friend, she lost her best friend and she mentioned how that person that she lost was always so happy and so jovial and she just didn't know what to say around that family and I said, why don't you be that? Imagine what they're feeling without that. So go and be with them and be that light, be that laughter. And she said, I didn't think of it that way. 
Yesterday we did 18 active rescues. That's 18 families that today would have had a very different day. We're now doing an average of 10 active rescues a day. The more volunteers, the more capacity we have to help people. So we love our volunteers. People that can straddle both this structured uh, way of life, but also think bigger picture, do very well here. Active listening is definitely one of those words, I would say, that we definitely use all throughout training. Those are skills that aren't just particular to crisis text line or volunteering as a crisis counselor. I think those are learned skills that you can take anywhere in, in the world. Look, this is the largest mental health data set that's ever been collected, stored, and analyzed. It's, an, it's another thing in the arsenal that we need to combat mental illness. There's so much more work to do.